Welcome everyone to the Low Fi Poli Sci Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Fi's and low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be global news show. Here we're going to talk about that famous question what's going on in the world today? We'll be covering five headlines from across the globe and then choose one to go into a more detailed analysis. For our third story today, we'll be focusing on the country of the United Kingdom with that lo fi style country profile. But first, the news fresh off the press. Source New York Times, America section. Three Mexican police officers arrested for alleged beating death. That's right, Lo-Fi Nation, we're starting off in the thick of it today. Protests are happening all over the world, not just the U.S. Massive protests began this past week in Guadalajara, Mexico, after the death of Giovanni Lopez at the hands of police. Three officers, one of them being the actual police commissioner, were arrested for the death, and their police departments have been taken over by higher Mexican government authorities. The implications. Police brutality and corruption happen everywhere in the world. No exceptions. Mexico gets a bad, bad rap for this, though. Regularly, people associate the cartels and the cops as being one and the same, and many wrongs never get righted. This case, however, from what it appears, and we can only hope, is in the process of being rectified. We'll be keeping a close eye on this story to see what happens to these three police officers. Next up, source, Reuters World News. Malayans rally against President Keita demand his resignation. And here we are again with another story, hard on protest. The West African country of Mali has seen protests at the estimated size of over 20,000 people calling for the president to step down and resign. The major issues, which there are quite a few, government separatist attacks, terrorist groups attacks, political corruption at the highest levels, rigged federal, federal elections recently, the mishandling of the current global conditions that impact Mali itself, the economy. I think you get the point. The implications. There is no shortage of reasons for the people of Mali to be displeased with their leader, and there is no shortage of momentum to potentially see him removed or resign from office. People's Power Movement protest starts off very similar to this. And if we've learned anything from the Arab Spring protest that toppled governments, we here at Lo-Fi poli say, keep your eye on Mali. Things are going down for sure. Now moving forward, because we never move on, it's time for our country profile of the day, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Geography lesson, Lo-Fi Nation. The UK borders the North Sea to the east, which just across it is Denmark, then Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium. To the south is the English Channel, and across it is France. To the west is the Irish Sea, and then Ireland. And to the north, more water. That's right, the UK is an island country, though perhaps best explained as a kingdom of countries. The UK has a long history. Let's sum it up. London, the city, was founded almost 2,000 years ago. England as a country was founded about 1,000 years ago. England and Scotland merged to create Great Britain in about 1700, so 300 years ago. In 1800, Ireland was added to create the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, so 200 years ago. And finally, in the 1920s, Ireland became independent, North Ireland became part of the UK, and in 1927, the name the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland was born, less than 100 years ago. The 2018 World Bank GDP per capita was just under $43,000 a year. Freedom House, covering civil liberties and civil rights, gave the ranking of 94 out of 100 with a free rating. Reporters Without Borders, ranking 180 countries and territories across the globe via media freedoms, ranked the country as number 40 out of 180 in 2018 and went up to number 33 for 2019. Transparency International, with its ranking of 198 countries and territories across the globe via their Corruption Perception Index, placed the UK at number 12 in 2019, down one place from the year before. In short, the UK is well-developed politically and economically, an advanced democracy, and one of the oldest countries in the world. Now what's been going on in the UK lately? Perhaps too much. Brexit still looms large over the country, as they have to sign a deal with the EU for trade before they officially leave the Union in December. The country is still battling with current global conditions being what they are, and the rising tension between China, Hong Kong, and the UK. Well, that brings us right up to our headline in the spotlight segment. Source, BBC News, UK section. UK to change immigration rule for Hong Kong citizens if China passes law. Well, 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 what do we have here? More Western countries taking shots at China and Hong Kong? And how exactly would this play out? Let's dive in. The background and implications of the story. Hong Kong, having been a former UK colony up until 1997, many of its citizens hold what is known as a British National Overseas Passport, a BNO. 
With these passports, those people could go to the UK for six months without travel visas. That is being extended to 12 months. Currently, over 300,000 Hong Kong citizens hold these passports. But the UK says an additional 2.6 million are eligible. So theoretically, the way the UK is going, they are going to make it so that about 3 million Hong Kong citizens could, if they want to, go to the UK for an entire year and then use that time to potentially complete residency or citizenship in the country. The implications implications. Well, there's about 7.5 million people in Hong Kong. 3 million people are eligible for the BNO with 12 months in the UK. That's almost half the entire population of the city. The possibilities and implications from that many people trying to leave all at once? Wow. We'll definitely have to wait and see how this plays out for sure. And a last piece of news from Reuters World News Technology Section. Zoom suspends U.S.-based activist account after Tiananmen event. Now you see, this kind of story is exactly why here we at Lo-Fi PoliSci don't believe tech companies have any interest in making the world free via their technologies, but rather just want to make money across the globe. Where to begin? Well, if you don't know much about the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre that took place in China, look it up. It's important. Every year, vigils are held around the world for those that lost their lives. This year, a U.S.-based activist group organized a global Zoom meeting to hold that vigil. And what does Zoom do? A U.S. company based in California, part of a democracy last time we checked, what do they do? A week after the meeting, they suspend the account for what appears to be breaking the rules of specific countries of people who were in the meeting. The account has been reactivated, but let's dive in a little further. The implications. Let's quote Zoom here. When a meeting is held across different countries, the participants within those countries are required to comply with their rep respective local laws. Let me translate this for you, Lo-Fi Nation. It means, to quote myself before I say it, We here at tech companies love the idea of freedom in the world, but some of the people in this meeting were in China, and China doesn't allow talk of Tiananmen Square, so we had to take action. Oh. Oh, is that so, Zoom? You had to uh, buckle under the pressure of an authoritarian government trying to keep free speech dead so you can secure your markets in China and not lose any revenue, even though in the midst of all this shit that we're all in, you are making money hands over fist, and you still need to make more money so you suspend the account of a U.S.-based activist over a Tiananmen Square virtual memorial? Get out of here on this Thursday. Goodness, I can't wait till Good News Friday. I'm Spent Lo-Fi Nation, and Lo-Fi Global News is out for the day. Always remember that Lo-Fi poli -Sci is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Stay safe, wash those hands, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Lo-Fi Poli-Sci Podcast. Pickering, signing